Dr. Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, you look great. It's good to have you with us via your, uh, your uh, Skype connection. Thank you, Alex. Good to see you today. We've got about a two or three second delay, so I'll try to just, uh, you know, not jump in too much just with a few questions you heard what i threw out uh, where would you like to start with the moves to censor i, I don't think i've ever seen with facebook and uh, all the rest of them being caught uh, censorship of this magnitude i think we live in an age where there's no understanding and no respect whatsoever for personal liberty and personal privacy the founders understood it much better they tried to protect us against a big government that would come in and destroy that but there is a collusion between big business, corporatism, and big government that are in, in, in control. So therefore, they can control the output. It used to be that uh, newspapers did it in three major networks, and uh, it was, uh, we understood it. And then it changed when there were more cable stations and internet stations and all. But they haven't quit. They're still challenging us. And you're right, the IRS has not been kind to us. They've been after us quite a few different times on some of our organizations and they continue to do it they uh, like to bankrupt us uh, you know through all the money you have to spend to try to defend oneself but i think what we're witnessing today is a result of an era ending and i've talked about this for maybe five or plus years about the end of an era because i believe the era of big government uh, the progressive era uh, really exhausted itself uh, probably at the end of the last century and now we have just been fidgeting and trying to keep things together. And that's why, you know, the political parties are in shambles, the economy's in shambles, civil liberties are in shambles. But the real problem is that the system we have today isn't working, it's ending. Keynesian economics doesn't work, that model is bad and, and never worked, but that was the substitute for fascism and communism. And the 20th century did a pretty good job at uh, smashing it because it's a total failure and there are still some who would like to be socialists and think that venezuela is the way to go and all this nonsense but you know the markets are very powerful the market said that fascism and communism failed but the substitute the american substitute of keynesianism economic planning central banking inflationism uh, fiat money and uh running our lives regulating our lives taking away our liberties and also this obsession with us believing that we are so exceptional that we can tell the rest of the world how to live. And we should be exceptional in, de in, de in dealing with our own problems and setting a good example. But so I think the mess that we're in today is the end of this era. And without anybody admitting this, we and th those in the freedom movement have been trying to warn people of this and giving them an option and quite frankly, I think we're doing fine there, even though, like you mentioned, Alex, on the introduction, that, uh, you know, uh, statism and big governments are alive and well. But they're bankrupt, so they will end, just as our empire will end, Keynesian economics will fail, the central banking system is going to fail. We just have to concentrate on it to energize another generation that there is an option for this, there is an alternative, and, of course, that's what I've been working on for Quite a few years. Absolutely, Dr. Paul. Uh, expanding on that, looking at what the so-called left is doing, allied with the establishment Republicans in this country, similarly in Europe, where I know you've traveled and spoken extensively as well, they now, because they were discredited last century, as you said, are instead just trying to dumb everyone down and really much overthrow reality and overthrow the engines of free market that are left because they just can't compete with that even existing even though it brings down the civilization, they'd rather rural uh, people, you know, not be able to take care of themselves. They'd rather city people not be able to take care of themselves. Uh, they'd rather uh, the whole country and the whole world be poor and rural a huge junk pile instead of a great civilization. And so my concerns are, what do you see them doing in their death throes? Because even most mainline analysts are starting to agree with you that we're coming to the end of a bubble, uh, that no matter what the establishment does, they're not going to be able to suppress change. More and more young people are waking up. So clearly, uh, I agree with you, this great turning that, you, that you've talked about for decades, but, but you've said is very close for five years is pretty much here. Uh, but, but how do you expect the empire to strike back? I mean, I think we're seeing it. Open, naked authoritarianism. But doesn't that only accelerate uh, the fall of their system? Well, yes, they're, they're a failure, but they will strike out. And uh, I think that what they have going for them right now is the dumbing down of America. So 
in many ways they have been successful by getting hold of the public school system and teaching people, you know, bad economics and bad foreign policy and, and all the things that uh, are wrong. But at the same time, uh, you know, the failure is there. I think they know that the failure is there, but they will strike out and they will become more authoritarian. And I think that is exactly what they're doing. And it isn't a partisan thing when you know that the Nancy Pelosi's of the world and the John Boehner's of the world were much more buddies than anybody realized, but that continues. The parties, the parties mean very little. But I think if nothing else, this current election cycle that's going on uh, represents the dumbing down of America. But then again, uh, does that mean we should be exhausted and run for the hills or should we continue the fight? Obviously, uh, I'm here for the fight. And to me, it's an intellectual fight and we have to beat them with better ideas. And I think there is a receptive audience out there, but what they, they have power because they're in control right now. But what we have on our side is that ideas have consequences. You can't stop ideas. Uh, it, uh, even, even the armies and the governments can't stop ideas if their time has come. Joining us now is John McAfee. Welcome, Mr. McAfee. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm very interested to hear your voice. I think the Libertarian Party needs your voice. I think America needs your voice in the discussion. We are threatened with a lot of vital issues. I think the border issues, the trade issues that we see that Donald Trump has tapped into, I think those are vital issues. But there's another vital issue that nobody is talking about, and that is the big brother aspect of massive surveillance. And there's many other issues that I don't really see Candidates like Gary Johnson addressing uh, four years ago when he was running, he basically focused his campaign on government redefining marriage, on being pro-abortion and on pot legalization, which is fine, except that those first two things are not even necessarily something that all libertarians agree on. We had pro-life libertarians when I was in the Libertarian Party. Uh, a lot of people don't believe that the government should have any role in defining marriage. And when it comes to pot legalization, that's fine, but I think we need to focus on the broader problems of drug prohibition in general. Then I was very disturbed to see that he's picking uh, William Weld, a guy who has supported assault weapon bans. He has yes. uh, supported other gun control measures. He supported the Iraq War 10 months, 10 months after the invasion. Uh, he's failed to oppose the Patriot Act. As a matter of fact, he worked as a DEA enforcer for Ed Meese. And this is a guy who gave us a civil asset forfeiture. Now, he eventually forced Ed Meese out for personal corruption charges, but he should have forced him into jail for giving us something like civil asset forfeiture. So I'm very disturbed to see the Libertarian Party moving in the direction of having these career politicians, which is what uh, Gary Johnson and um, uh, William Weld are, in my opinion. I think they need to be brought into the 21st century with issues like you're addressing. Talk to us about the vitality of cybersecurity and what we need to do to protect us from the government. Well, with your permission, sir, I'd like to talk some, about something far more important. Sure. Uh, we're talking about issues, uh, but there's an issue that absolutely no one has addressed. And that is that when Dwight Eisenhower left office in the 50s, he warned us about something called, called the military industrial complex. That connection between government and industry, which would only cause greater power in both of those. Um, you talk, Gary Johnson talks about presidential debates. If we don't get into the debate, we're lost, so he's suing the debate commission. Well, we know that's not going to go to court until after the election. We know how the, the court process works, so it's yeah. other nonsense. At the, Las, at the Las Vegas debate that Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller put together, I did the debate like everybody else. In my closing statement, I got up and said, what you have watched is utter, complete nonsense fabricated by the media in the 60s and perpetrated by the media for the media. And let me explain. What do you have in a presidential debate? You have opening statements and closing statements written by speech writers, not yeah. the candidate himself. You have a candidate that has been coached by dozens in and. As a matter of fact, I think we lost transmission there for a moment. One of the founders of the Libertarian Party was a speechwriter for Goldwater, who had that famous uh, comment, uh, extremism in defense of liberty is no vice, and moderation in defense of justice is no virtue, if I got that correct. I may not have gotten that exactly right, but you're exactly right. right. 